uh, friends uh, uh, today we are going to discuss about global positioning system and uh, since i am talking to engineers i consider them as uh, very important uh, scientists who can contribute in different ways uh, friends uh, before i talk about the global positioning system uh, i'll take a minute uh, to tell something to the engineers in the country and to the young scientists in the country now the time has come that uh, you cannot do everything in every field but it is time for you to decide your area of interest and pursue it most intensively i repeat it is time for you to identify the area in which you are most interested and you pursue your career very intensively in that field if you do so you will become very important and significant and your contribution and your knowledge generated will be used by others and the knowledge generated by others will help you and a team to integrate it synthesize it and use it for different purposes now in today's talk i am talking about global positioning system let me tell you that uh, it is an integrated system integrated system because we have uh, taken help of uh, the satellite launches we have taken help of uh, the software producers we have taken help of the industries we have taken help of uh, the different uh, physicists uh, who can help us in uh, using the radio waves now in the, my first lecture on remote sensing i told you about uh, the remote sensing satellites which are popularly called as polar sun synchronous satellites friends uh, these polar sun synchronous satellites are low altitude satellites so with reference to earth they are placed in the space uh, approximately at an altitude of uh, 7000 kilometers above the earth then i told you about uh, the telecommunication satellites and these satellites are high altitude satellites which are normally placed at an altitude of 36000 kilometers above the earth surface today i am going to talk about a, a third category of satellite which is in between these two extremes and these satellites are placed approximately at an altitude of about 20200 kilometers now these three kinds of satellites have different purposes whereas the high altitude satellites for used for telecommunication are geostationary in nature and the low altitude satellites for remote sensing are polar sun synchronous satellites now the satellites which i am going to talk to you today they are earth centered orbital satellites and they don't work independently but they work in unison so we are going to talk about the constellation of satellites so with this lecture you are aware of three different categories of satellites the high altitude telecommunication satellites and india has developed its own satellites in the, in the form of insat series satellites they are all our telecommunication satellites 
India has also the low altitude satellites for remote sensing and we have IRS series satellites. And India has recently developed the satellites but for a regional use and that is called as Indian Regional Navigational Satellite System. So the discussion today is focused on global positioning system. Friends, keep on noting down all your doubts and questions which mm -hmm. we can address after the lecture is over. Feel free to discuss mm -hmm. any point. Let's look at the first part of it. And that talks about navigation. Now what is navigation? Navigation is the act, activity or process of finding the way to get to a place when you are traveling in a ship, aeroplane, car, etc. Now this, defin this definition of navigation has come before you from a simple Merriam-Webster's Learner's Dictionary. This is what it defines. That is the act, activity or process of finding the way to get to a place when you are traveling in a ship, airplane, car, etc. If you look at your own life every day, you begin your life in the morning and end your day by asking so many questions related to where are you, how can I find you, how to reach you. These are the questions which you always come across. And therefore, we have to first understand the traditional navigational tools which we had. How the human beings on the earth started moving from one place to another. Most of us are very comfortable in the urban areas. But then, have you ever thought, how do we move from place A to place B? Friends, we move with the help of landmarks. Now the question is, what are these landmarks? Now think of a situation that you are deep into the sea. Will you find landmarks around you? Perhaps you will not find landmarks because it's all water, water, water. And if you find a landmark, they will be in the form of some islands, if they are visible to you somewhere. Now the landmark in the ocean will be an island. Now with reference to that island, you might decide your further movements. Think of a situation if you are in desert, deep desert, where all around you is only sand, no vegetation. Now, do you find some landmarks? And if you have to move in the desert without these landmarks, it becomes very difficult for you. So in the case, if you are in a snow clad area, even today, if you are in Antarctica or if you are in Arctic, you will not find any landmark there for your movement. So if you are moving in the sea or if you are moving in the ocean areas or if you are moving in the snow clad areas, you realize that we don't find landmarks. So in simple terms, landmarks are marks on the land. Now, what are landmarks for you? So when you move from your place A to place B, from your place of residence, so your place of residence is a mark. So you have a house, you have a house number, you have a road, you have a building, you have crossroads, you have roundabouts, you have trees, you have temples, all these things are landmarks. Without realizing the importance of these landmarks, friends, we manage our day, we manage all our activities. But think of a situation when these landmarks were not there. When the earth was in the initial stage of human civilization. Many times, people when you used to move from one place to another, they were lost. They were lost forever and they could never reach back. Slowly. So what we learned now, that in spite of so much of development, or all movements are regulated with the help of landmarks. These landmarks 
maybe buildings anything you know but initially when these landmarks were created by the our ancestors now they were in the form of some rock uh, some pebbles uh, some stones uh, now they were not they were not permanent landmarks they were temporary landmarks because they were either washed away by flood they were washed away by wind and sometimes uh, they were removed by some other people now therefore uh, those landmarks were not never permanent now we have many landmarks available with which we manage our life we move from one place to another and in our discussions all such references come for example if you have to tell your friend or somebody to come to your house you normally tell you come to this place you will find a temple from the temple you turn, turn left then you will find a shop from shop you move 100 yards and then they will find a house number and then with house number you can locate my house this is what are you doing you are doing nothing but you are helping your friend to come to your house with the help of landmarks but think of a situation when the landmarks are not there you will find managing life is very difficult so friends in different part of the world different kinds of landmarks were developed but then at the same time these landmarks were visible only during day time in the presence of sun what about the movement of human beings or any living creature during night time so human being is not nocturnal by nature but if it has to move from one place to another now no light is there how will we move so in those days friends our ancestors started using some other marks of the space and these marks of the space were either moon or stars because they were visible to them now that means people started using the references points with the help of moon and stars they managed their life and we learned a lot even for a longer period the entire sea navigation was based on the stars the reference was stars so people first understood the patterns of stars and their uh, nature of uh, the stars and based on that all the movements were there so even today many people use the stars then comes the third part of uh, the references where we have we developed the maps maps come as a third unit and uh, third element for our navigation so many people started preparing maps and with the help of map they move started moving from one place to another so if we have a map then you can find your location and with the ref references or the information you move from one place to another after the maps were developed see we also developed some instruments such as compass which gives you the directions correctly instruments like sextant were also used but in spite of all such developments till early 19th century friends or till uh, mid 19th century navigation remained the greatest challenge and we have so many examples for example if you look at columbus in early uh, in the late uh, 15th century 1492 columbus and his ships were misdirected if you look at in the early 19th century itself a very important uh, aviator in the field of field of aviation amelia earhart disappeared and never found due to poor navigation it happened in only 1937 she was one of the very good uh, uh, very good in aviation from us many ships or spaceships miss their destination even today so we launch them but they never come back now the question is that now we have a situation whether we want to move on the land first second whether we want to move in the ocean third whether we want to move in the air and fourth whether we want to go in the space and manage our movements now most of us even don't even think of these things even in the space friends we don't find references and uh, the way we may we manage our life on the earth the way we treat the day on the earth year on the earth the moment you go in the space uh, all these concepts uh, they lose their significance because then the time which you manage the time in the space will be very different and therefore we have to understand the basic concepts of it keeping this in mind friends now what has come to you today read this two small paragraph 
What do you do today? You have a mobile. What do you do? These are Android mobiles. What do you do? You type an address into your phone, and up will pop a step-by-step -step route from where you are to where you want to be. This is what you do. You type it. This is, in its way, a magic. Magic that has, at this point, been rubbed and polished into a simple fact of life. Now all of us, even a small child, school going child is aware that yes, now I can use GPS and with the help of GPS I can move anywhere and then the child is very confident. Even you are confident that my child can come back. You are also using. But the mobile GPS which you are using is not the GPS in fact, but it is a GPS service which you get through your mobile operators. So different companies provide you GPS information in different modes, which will, I will discuss later on. But then I'm talking, I'm going to talk to you directly about what the GPS is and how it works. So the ease with which we, we machine carrying humans, who, who are we? We are machine carrying humans. So I'm carrying a machine and with the help of this machine, I manage my, my movements. If I throw the machine, my movements are not managed. So make our way through the world though is quite new because it has come to us only recently in the last uh, 10 years in india and in the last about 30 years in case of uh, the other countries particularly the most advanced countries like us why late to us we will discuss it later on and it is the product of a long remember it painstaking history that means a lot of lot of people were involved in it and it is a very complex system but very meaningful system complex but very meaningful and you'll be learning learning about it today we have found that magic instrument with us friends now as far as this uh, gps is concerned it is the satellite based radio navigation and positioning system which is called as global positioning system which was launched by US Department of Defense and has revolutionized the field of surveying and mapping. With unprecedented accuracy, economy, efficiency, and ease of operation offered by the GPS, this unique space geodetic technique has found numerous applications in virtually every engineering, scientific, and resource management field. I'll discuss them in later part of my discussion. Now look at it, the very important part of it. Now this GPS provides positions of stationary objects. Because earlier in our life, we were trying to find out where is this temple, where is this city, where is my house. Now all of them are stationary in nature. And we were trying to locate them with the help of our relative positions of objects, or we were trying to find out with the help of a map, but they're all stationary. Now, this GPS is not only recording and providing information about the stationary objects, but also the moving objects. This is very, very important. Now, look at it. So, what has happened in the last uh, 30 to 40 years, you have to understand first. Your Earth is a moving body. Your satellite will be a moving body. Different objects on the Earth may be stationary, but you are now a moving body your vehicles are moving body your aeroplanes are moving body now it was a great challenge to find out the position of uh, objects which are moving on a earth which itself is a moving object with the help of another satellite which is also a moving object and that all three together are continuously moving along with earth now this was certainly to be synchronized very scientifically. Synchronization of a moving object with an earth which is a moving object, with a satellite which is a moving object, with all the four together as a moving object in the universe. So synchronous, because every moment your earth is at a different location. Every moment in space, I'm talking about space. And therefore this synchronization required a lot of scientific effort which was done. Now, it is very important for us to understand this history of GPS. Now, the first ever scientific effort was done in 1958. 
and which was called as transit nnss which simply stands for transit navy navigational satellite system it was developed by the us navy with the help of just five satellites and these satellites were placed at an altitude of 1075 km but it was it was all to manage their own activity around us not they were not for the whole world but by 1964 you find this became operational so it took almost 6 years to become fully operational by 1967 this information was made to civilian us which civilian us all those who were living in us or around us so it was available to them but this was part of transit navy navigational satellite system by 1969 the defense navigational satellite system was formed which is called as dnss here comes the role of uh, department of defense in us in 1972 the joint services program of us started in which us air force navy army mariners and defense mapping agencies they shared the responsibility and they decided that we need a system which should be working globally so in 58 it was only navy by 72 it was all the important services of us they took interest in it in 1973 therefore they launched a program called as navistar which stands for navigational satellite timing and ranging i repeat for you navigational satellite time and ranging which was the most important and perhaps the first ever global positioning system so the system which they had developed earlier was a regional system but now they are thinking of a system which is which will be global and therefore they called it as global positioning system 73 by 1978 they had launched only four satellite first four satellites were launched but there were many questions at what altitude these satellites are to be located what will be the plane in which they will be moving at what uh, locations uh, they will be to begin with uh, revolving around many questions were there by 1993 so a program which started somewhere in 1973 it took almost 20 years for the us scientists to launch their 24th satellites now this 24 satellites why 24 satellites i'll discuss them later so in 93 only in us this particular system becomes fully operational 1993 now i hope most of you were born by the, by this this period so i am going to discuss things which comes with your birth so you are lucky people that you were born with such a system already available for you your forefathers were not available having such information friends by 1995 the system becomes fully operational capability but what happens in see by to may 2000 military accuracy available to all users what does it mean it means that uh, the information which they were creating or which were provided they were not made made for uh, they were not available for uh, the civilian users for security purposes so there was an element of uh, degrading the signals so that uh, the civilian users don't get the very precise information because there were threats for military installations but in may 2000 the president of us decided to do away with this because it was found that there are so intelligent people across the world that even if you degrade the system they can very precisely identify the locations because they were aware of the spatial correlations and with the help of that it was possible to minimize the error so since error can be minimized with intelligence now there was no purpose of having it so now the same kind of information which is available to military users in us is available to civilians across the world and that to free of cost 
when i say free of cost i mean satellites and information is free of cost but then instrument you have to purchase so the equipment has a cost but information is free available i'll discuss it later on so the question is what is this gps uh, what do you find that uh, it is a us owned utility that provides users with positioning navigation and time that means pnt positioning navigation and timing this system consists of three segments the space segment the control segment and user segment friends since you are engineers you have a choice choice to select whether you want to work for control segment whether you want to work for space segment or whether you want to be part of the user segment choice is before you you cannot do everything but you can have a choice with that you want to develop something for the user for the user segment or the control segment or for the space segment i will discuss one by one so the us air force develops maintains and operates the space and control segments but let, let me tell you here itself in the beginning that it is not only the us now there are many other countries and the unions are developing their gps with a simple concept in mind that maybe when the exigencies or emergencies emerge american systems may not be available to the world and it will be in that situation the collapse of the whole economy of the world except for us because since it is completely controlled by the us they have a choice though they don't have any intent in the near future but change in intent is possible any time depending on the situation or emergencies so the EU, european union decided to have its own independent uh, global positioning system and uh, they call it as galileo though as on date galileo is not fully operational because they have launched only 14 satellites but then the most important counterpart of usa that is russia decided to have its fully operational system called as glonass which stands for global navigational system in case of glonass uh, russians tried to send as many as 132 satellites till date out of them only 120 satellites were uh, uh, able to reach the destinations but as on date only 24 satellites are operational others are dysfunctional so we have two parallel systems available in the world we have the glonass of the russia and we have a system called as uh, the gps by the us galileo is not fully operational only 14 satellites are available china and japan they have also come in this field because they are also competitors and they want to develop their own india has developed its own i will discuss it later on but then it is regional in nature not global and i wish that scientists like you engineers like you can make india a global player soon i hope you can do it so this is what i discussed with you that we have uh, galileo we have glonass we have bidu of china we have gagan from india now as far as uh, the level of accuracy is concerned now three things are there the first part is navigation so if you are navigating whether you are navigating in the ocean or whether you are using aviation in the air now 100 meter accuracy is possible they might seem you 100 meter is too poor an accuracy but in case of sea navigation 100 meter navigation accuracy is good i'll tell you why this happens now for for the purpose of mapping you can achieve an accuracy of 1 meter for the purpose of mapping for the map for the purpose of geodetic positioning you can achieve an accuracy in millimeters which is very very good now the accuracy of gps signal in space is actually the same for both the civilian gps that is standard positioning service and the military gps service which is called as precise positioning service there is difference because in case of the uh, military use uh, they have precise positioning service and precise positioning service depends on not one uh, uh, particular harsh but we have uh, the two different bands which are used for them them and therefore it is better this means military users can perform as atmospheric corrections a technique that reduces radio degradation caused by the earth's atmosphere with less degradation gps provides better accuracy than the 
basic SPS. SPS is available to civilians. PPS is available to military users. SPS stands for Standard Positioning Service. Now look at this. This is how you can play a very important role. So we have we have three different segments, most important. First is space segments. That means what we need to have satellites. A large number of satellites. You have to decide at what altitude they are to be. You have to decide what path they have to follow. You have to decide what kind of equipments and machinery is to be put. You have to decide what kind of signal recording and signal emitting systems are to be equipped. So there are so many components as far as space segment is concerned. So is the case with control segment. Now these control segments are located on the ground. But then they operate independently with the satellites, not with the users. And uh, these stations, uh, in case of US, uh, are located in different parts of the world now. Where master control stations, they have two. One is a substitute station, another is... So Americans are very intelligent, let me tell you without any doubt about them. So they have always a subsidiary plan for anything, whatever they do. So if, if they have a master station, they have also a substitute which will be activated in case the master control is destroyed by any enemy forces. So then, then comes the ground antennas. We have the ground antennas, they have many. We, we call them as monitor stations and I will show you on the map where, where they are located and how they are located. Uh, then comes the user segment where we are involved, where we, as users are involved. Now same information is provided to every person across the world. But the application varies. Now the application of the same information will depend on your ingenuity, your creativity, your intelligence and that is how the different part of the world uh, is managed differently using the GPS system. Some people using the intelligence can manage anything with GPS. Some people, they for them it is just a fun and they use it for entertainment purpose only depending on their requirements. But then I again repeat, same information can be used differently by different people where three things must be kept in mind. First, use of information must be done. Misuse of information must be avoided. Abuse of information should never be thought even. But in the last one decade itself, friends, we have found the use, we have found misuse, and also the abuse. The use of the instrument, same instrument. Today I have an instrument, simple instrument, the GPS handle instrument. It is a product of Garmin. Very, very simple, very cheap. Friends, this was the instrument when India was attacked. The Bombay incident took place. And Kassab had nothing but this simple instrument. This simple instrument can create so much havoc that our commercial capital of India was under threat and we were really in trouble because if such incidents to take place in India many more the whole economy can be shattered in just few days not in months or years few days therefore use misuse and abuse now I, I, I support the use of it not the misuse of it not the abuse of it Friends, let's look at what is this space segment. Now, this GPS space segment consists of a constellation of satellites transmitting radio signals to users. The United States is committed to maintaining the availability of at least 24 operational GPS satellites 95% of the time. That means the message is very clear that this particular system is a very costly system. And the satellites which you launch have a life. That means you have to be always ready with a new set of satellites, always. And if you do not have the financial support, scientific support, launch support, you cannot maintain this system regularly. And therefore, many countries which are poor or developing, they cannot afford such a costly technology. To ensure this commitment, the Air Force 
has been flying 31 operational GP satellites for the past few years. Why 30? Why 31 open satellites? Because any time, if there is any one satellite which may be offset, which may be dysfunctional, which might lose its path and track for any reason, for any technical snag, and therefore the system will become uh, uh, almost uh, uh, dysfunctional. Therefore, they have additional GPS satellites as and when required, they activate them. This is very, very important. So as of June 15, 2016, I'm giving you the latest information, only three months back. So there were 31 operational satellites in the GPS constellation. Very, very important. But then the basic requirement is 24 satellites. And these 24 satellites will be placed in six orbital planes. Very important. Uh, as a scientist, uh, see, uh, we have to understand that, see, if we are launching satellites, where will these satellites go? And how will they operate? So what do you find that these 24 satellites are supposed to revolve around the Earth continuously in a such a synchronized manner that when Earth moves from one place to another in the space, these satellites also keep on moving along with Earth. But then they are, remember here, they are not geostationary satellites. The geostationary satellites focus a particular part of the Earth continuously while revolving around the Earth. But in case of uh, these GPS satellites, these uh, GPS satellites will continuously move around the Earth. They will keep on changing the location in the space, but they will remain synchronized with the Earth. And in one orbital path itself, as many as four satellites will be there. I repeat for you. In one orbital path, there will be as many as four satellites. Sometimes in the same orbital path, they will have one vacant slot for additional satellites. But satellite launching is one part of it, and regular launch of satellite is another part of it. So we have six orbital planes. Now this next question will be, if they are six orbital planes, how they are inclined? Now, friends, they are inclined at an angle of 55 degree with respect to equator. So if, when, if you look at the diagram next, when it comes, follows, you'll find that their path is 50 degree with reference to the, our equator on the Earth. And then each orbit is separated by 60 degree. So there is no chance of uh, having any collision with one satellite with the other because they are separated by 60 degree. And height, I told you that they have height of about 20,200 kilometers above the Earth. Their path is circular. I again repeat, the path is almost circular. And their orbital period in the sidereal day is 11 hours, 5 minutes. That means each satellite can ha have at least two orbits every day. Two orbits every day. This is very important. This is how they work. So five to eight satellites are visible from any point on Earth. Five to eight satellites are visible from any point on Earth. I'll stop here and show you how this works if you have a simple GPS. Madam, see, I need the blackboard also to tell my young friends how this whole system tells them about the location. Friends, I have a very simple instrument. Though now in the market there are very uh, advanced systems available, but I have come today with a very simple system. This is uh, uh, e text model of Garmin. Now, when you open the system, let me tell you. There is. Yes, okay. This is a very very simple system, but then it will educate you about everything which you can find in any advanced system. Now, the moment uh, you open this, you'll find the first page and the first page is called as satellite page. Look at this, how, how will it look like? So when you open this system, you get a satellite page, I'll call it as satellite page.
remember whether you are using this small equipment or any advanced equipment you should be aware of the satellite phase when you open the satellite phase friends you will find uh, such a small diagram available now what are this denoting friends uh, in the satellite phase this outer line is a line to denote to horizon this denotes your horizon what does it mean where are you standing on the earth suppose this is earth and you are standing somewhere here suppose you are standing somewhere on some somewhere here with a simple instrument now what will happen you will find that suppose you are here all around you all around you you will find that there will be a circular sky there will be a circular sky which you can see so your sight will be so if you look at this sight around this and around this you will find that you are going to have a sky small sky around you now this is the in in in, in simple sense what i say that you tell and you realize that you you have a feeling of your earth and sky beauty that will be giving you the complete view of the sky as if the sky is in the form of an inverted bowl over your head sky as an inverted bowl over your head now that is what it appears so this this becomes your horizon so all around you whatever sky is visible to you will be called as horizon i will explain you why this is very important now this is what is the inner circle this inner circle tells you that wherever you are standing if you see the sky at an angle of 45 degree this gives you an angle of 45 degree so that means the sky at an angle of 45 degree will be shown with the help of a inner circle and in the center there will be a dot and dot will be the position of the instrument or the equipment which you have now what does it mean the, the requirement is as and when and wherever you are with the simple equipment the moment you switch it on when the satellite base opens this is supposed to be getting connected with the satellites but satellites which are available only in this particular zone that means in this particular part of the sky ever view will be getting connected that means your instrument will depict the position of satellites in different format like this so you will realize that yes i can see satellites one satellite is on the horizon that means very close to the ground level very close that means from your foot level you look at the at least almost at the horizon level and then you find that there, is, there are satellites which is in, inside the ring that means they are vertically above you and here is a satellite which is vertically above you exactly above your head you cannot see them but this instrument make you see you cannot see with your naked eye but this instrument help you to see these satellites friends now why it is important for you now wherever you are these 24 sets of satellites are not above your head or in your horizon itself rather they are all around the earth since they are all around the earth your requirement is how many satellites should i get linked with my instrument so that i get the signals best signals now the minimum requirement for this system to operate is friends three satellites minimum requirement is three satellites but if you get connected with three satellites remember you will be getting only information called as 2d so in the system it will write that you are getting connected only with three satellites and three satellites means the information will be about the horizontal distance is only but if you want the vertical distance also the minimum requirement of this simple instrument is this should always be connected as many as four minimum satellites so the moment you get connected with four satellites you will find that this 2d becomes 3d and you can see on the screen 3d but look at the location of it what will happen this is very important but many times uh, our users do not know about it and the accuracy will depend on where are satellites remember 
if the number of satellites are more in this ring, your signals received by this instrument will be least obstructed. I repeat for you, if the signal, if the satellite, the, if the location of satellites are within the ring, that means they will be least obstructed by any physical barrier available on the earth. And therefore, if you are using it, try to find as many satellites as in this ring. Or if you don't find it, accept it. One point that the error will be there because signals are going to be poor. If you find satellites only on the periphery, that means they are far away from you. And when the signals will come in, in between, maybe there is a building, in between there is a mountain, in between there are trees. Now the signals or the quality of signals will be reduced. Now how will you know about them? Just on the bottom of the French, the na name of the number of each satellite has been given number. And remember, these are two digit numbers. So you'll find on the bottom of it written as 04, 08, and so on and so forth. These kind of numbers will be visible to you. They are nothing but they are the satellite numbers. And for each satellite, the signals will be visible to you. So what do you find? That these are the satellites and these are the signals. So we find that satellite number 99 is giving a poor signal, whereas satellite number 89 is not at all giving any signal. And you can find it here also that whether I am getting signals strong or not. The moment signals are strong, the length of the signal will be longer. And if there is obstruction, you'll find there will be a shadow over it. And you'll find that signals are coming poor. Now, this is very important when it comes to accuracy. Okay? Now, the moment you are linked with all such information, you find that on top of it, it, it will write the estimated error. That is called as estimated position error. So, estimated position error will depend on many factors. First, where is your instrument? Whether the instrument is inside a vehicle, or, or outside a vehicle. The moment it is inside the vehicle, you require you require to link it with an antenna outside your vehicle. Or if it is inside a building, again it requires an antenna outside building. Or if you are moving, then you have to ensure that minimum of obstruction is there. And if the obstruction is high, the amount of signals will be poor. It does not mean that you will not get the information, you will get the information. But then you have to be very careful that how do you synchronize and synthesize that information? That is very, very important. Now look at what I was talking about. Look at the constellation. This is how the whole system is depicted before you. So you can see your earth and all around your earth, there are satellites. If you count them, there are six different planes. Okay. And then in each plane, I told you that as many as four satellites will be there, but with a vacant slot of for one sat satellite, they at 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 the equator level, they cut the equator at an angle of forty five, but between the within the each plane, there is a separation level of sixty degree, and the altitude I told you altitude is twenty thousand. 200 kilometers above the earth's surface remember here one more one more catch word now when we started measuring the altitude on the earth we had no reference point to begin with friends so what we did we started using the mean sea level of the earth as a reference point for a pretty longer period on the earth all engineers all scientists were using the reference level as the mean sea level but then remember it that see when we are measuring the mean sea level, mean sea level of the earth varies from one ocean to the other. And therefore, the accurate distances cannot be worked out precisely. So what we did, way back in 84, we decided that, okay, we are going to consider not the mean sea level as a reference point, but the center of the earth as the reference point. Because now we are not measuring things only on the earth, but we are measuring things even in the sky. So the reference point changed from the mean sea level to the WGS 84 system uh, where we consider now the center of the earth. Therefore, in many literature, if you look at the height of these uh, planes the, or the satellites, they are with reference to the center of the earth. 
the every center of the earth because here also there is a catch word that the diameter of the earth is approximately 12756 km i am talking about the equatorial diameter the pole diameter is certainly less the by 42 km but that has to be kept as a scientist very very clearly that how do they matter let me tell you when it comes to the dimension of the earth even even, even the highest point on the earth so called mount everest is only 8 km 8848 meters approximately 9 km now 9 km of distance with respect to the dimension of 12756 km stands nowhere so in, in in with reference to the earth say, total uh, the the size these these features don't even uh, this uh, they are not even visible when you are working from from this space and this is very important so for us mount everest is a very big location and similarly the deepest point on the earth is about 11 km so this 11 km and then these two uh, this 9 km put together 20 km now 20 km with reference to earth's diameter of 12000 then it is nothing so they will be just very minor uh, things visible or, or they will not even appear and therefore we treat our earth as a uh, spheroid or so called geoid only because of that because these variations are insignificant these variations in terms of the earth's dimension is insignificant that is very important now look at it i talked about the control segments friends so if you look at it we find that you have seen you can see the red star now this red star is master control station in us it is located in colorado colorado and uh, the location is uh, in the east of rocky mountains very safe location but remember that i told you in the beginning that they have an alternate master station also and this alternate master station is uh, located at uh, Vandenberg in California so one is uh, in Colorado and they have an alternate at uh, California and then you can see the other places we have the ground antennas in the form of green uh, uh, triangles then we have the NGA monitor stations uh, in the purple circles and then we have air force station station uh, in US itself and then in Hawaii also and then we have uh, uh, a few monitoring stations uh, we, and then look at them very carefully we have monitoring station located in hawaii we have uh, monitoring station lo located in atlantics at uh, ascension we have uh, another one in digo garcia and we have uh, another one located in pacific at uh, uh, island called as quasalim now i have given you a detailed information about how the system operates i again repeat looking them is very simple doing them is very complex because the whole exercise requires 24 by 7 monitoring continuous monitoring and that is what the control segment did now look at it so the second part of is called as control segment first was space segment second is control segment the gps control segment consists of a global network of ground facilities that track the gps satellites monitor their transmission perform perform analysis and send commands and data to the constellation the current operational control segment includes a master control station i showed you an alternate master con control station in bandenberg california and 11 command and control antennas and 15 monitoring sites the locations of these facilities are shown on the map i showed you then third part of it is called as user segment the user segment consists of the gps receiver that is the equipment that receives the signals from gps satellites and uses the transmitted information to calculate the user's three dimensional position now this is how the gps satellite uh, as a vehicle will look like so they will have four atomic clocks let me tell you very important i told you that clocks which you use they have a lot of many errors because when we use the space technology remember our accuracy level should be very very high To what level? Three billionth part of a nanosecond or millisecond. That kind of accuracy is required, friends. Now, uh, many of us in India do not value the importance of time, but in terms of technology, even uh, forget about second, milliseconds matter. Milliseconds matter, friends, and we are talking about three billionth part of a millisecond. You can you, you can't even comprehend what I am talking about. Now these atomic clocks have an accuracy of three billionth part of a millisecond. Very important. 
They have three nickel cadmium batteries. They have two solar panels. They are used for battery charging, power generation, and 1136 watts. They have S-band antenna, satellite control, 12 element L-band antenna, I told you, for the user communication. And then they have the fourth generation, uh, the block IIF satellite vehicles. Now the weight of the satellites, about uh, 2400 pounds. Height of it is about 16 feet. Width will be about 38 feet. Design life is 10 years only. Now the component of the system very important for the user segment. So you have to have a system called a GPS antenna and receiver, simple instruments or maybe advanced one. Remember the system is same, information will be same. Only value addition will be there. I'll, I'll give you what value addition means. So suppose this system is there. Now the information can be acquired in different languages. So what I do as a user, I, I, I decide, okay, I want to get the information in French language. So I will add it. This is called value addition. Somebody is interested in Japanese language, that will be added. Similarly, somebody is interested in the units, not in millimeters, but in uh, the British units. So the inches and, uh, and the miles and furlongs will be added. Now such additions are done for the conversion purposes by the different uh, companies which they manufacture these instruments. So advancement will be in terms of uh, processing the information and then providing them different uh, uh, aspect of the information that is there. For example, recording of information in this system will be limited. Recording of information in a bigger system will be more. So one can record, for example, in, in this case, I can record as many as 500 points. In, in a bigger system, there will be more possibility which will have a more recording facility. It may record 5,000 or 5 lakh, depending on. So that is what the adv adv advancement is taking place. So then it will be providing information about position, position in three format. That is the latitude, longitude, and altitude. Three things will be there. Now, the question is, in what way you can use this information? That is that is where we have, we have to be very important. That, yes, if I come to know about the position of an object, uh, its altitude, its latitude, how, how will it help me? Second is velocity. This is very important. Velocity is going to help you that at what speed a particular thing is moving from place A to place B. That is another point of uh, the, the reference point. So what do you find? Uh, that suppose you are moving and your information regarding speed is there or if the information regarding the time required to re uh, reach a particular destination is there if that is also available wonderful nothing like that then the timing i told you that the timing here is with atomic clock and this is used by aircraft ground vehicles ships individuals now different people need different for different purposes and uh, now you must have seen that uh, the many business uh, houses, they deliver goods uh, at your house. And the challenge that if we are delayed by the time stipulated, then you don't pay for us. Now, how do they manage it? Now they have all GPS information. That means all tracking information is there. All movement information is there. This is very important. As a user, we don't know the processes involved in it because we are interested in the output of it and we realize that output is good. Uh, this is how this whole system operates, friends. So what we have, we have something called as satellite signaling or the ranging. So we come to know what, where are satellite located? Satellite location is one point of it. Satellites to user distance. If the satellite is there, the distances of satellites will keep on changing with respect to you, your location and that is that that is very important then you will require minimum four satellites then the distance measurement this will be done with the help of radio signals which they travel at the speed of light measures time from satellite to user and then low tech simulation pseudo random code complex signals you need to each satellite all satellites use the same frequency this is very important they are economical 
distance to a satellite is determined by measuring how long a radio signal takes to reach us from that satellite now what you find that here the time is important time is important and this time is not in uh, minutes or uh, they are not in hours they are in milliseconds or sometimes sub milliseconds so the so you, you require the best possible clock to make the measurements we assume that both the satellite and our receiver are generating the same pseudo random codes at exactly the same time by comparing how late the satellite pseudo random code appears compared to our receiver's code we determine how long it took to reach us this is very important that is why we call them as ranging time ranging time ranging and then what we do we multiply that travel time by the speed of light and you have got the distance complete scientific method methodology accurate timing is the key very important to measuring distance to satellite so if see the distances here are in, in, in uh, astronomical units from distances from earth to satellite and then from satellite to satellite all distances are in the astronomical units that means if you are doing measurement on the earth and if the accuracy you want you want in millimeters now the time of time is very important now this because time will decide the velocity time will decide the distances time will decide the directions everything and therefore it is the key element satellites are accurate because they have four atomic clocks and each one of them you know they cost 100000 dollar one clock so you can understand how costly the whole system is receiver clocks don't have to be too accurate so your clock may not be that accurate but then the satellites are supposed to be having the most accurate clocks because an extra satellite range measurement can remove errors to use the satellites as references for range measurements we need to know exactly where they are first thing because i told you from the diagram that if the satellites are located near the horizon then in signals will be poor even in this case see error will not be in kilometers error will remain but they will be in only meters so don't don't worry that see they are going to be in millimeters they, they are going to be in kilometers no error will be there but they may not be very precise you want millimeter precision gp satellites are so high up their orbits are very predictable all gps receivers have an almanac programmed into their computers so if this is a receiver they have a, an almanac all information will be recorded in this simple instrument and if you want you can uh, process them as and when you need it minor variations in their orbits are measured by the department of defense you don't do it if there is some problem then this will be measured by the department of defense sometimes what happens it lights come down sometimes they go up sometimes they, they their velocity changes now all such minor changes will be controlled by the monitoring stations you have no you have no control so if there is some change in the atmosphere or some change in the ionosphere or in the stratosphere and because of that there is some changes in the uh, entire system then this will be managed by the master stations on the or the monitoring stations we don't have any control about it the error information is sent to the satellites to be transmitted along with the time signals and this is to be done again by the stations this is i discussed about this so system performance standard positioning system which will have a 100 meter horizontal accuracy i told told you about the sps that is the standard position this is in public domain this is available to the civilians and in case of vertical 156 meters of difference designed for civilian use no user fee no restrictions so in case of spss koi fees nahi deni hai kuch bhi nahi dena aapko it is fully available and all your mobile operators let me tell you they use this sps so all the information so what they do let me tell you here very important because you might be surprised how it happens remember friends all the information which you get from these satellites or signals are to be managed by the human beings on the ground by the different operators by you so what do you do so you get the information about locations in terms of positions particularly with reference to latitude longitude and altitude but all the attribute data are to be added by you i again repeat all the attribute suppose you find a building 
so it will the system will give you information about the location in terms of its latitude its longitude its altitude but system will not give you information that this is deloitte's building no this will not give you information that this is president's house of india no who will have this information you have to do it your mobile operators they get all this information and then they keep on adding the attribute data and when you are putting the address of your house remember if they have added the information then only your house will be shown in the gps system if they have not done the survey and if they have not added the attribute data then your house number with your name will not be there therefore there is always a possibility to keep on updating the attribute data attribute data in the system and that requires a lot of manpower because you have to go in the field try to find out which new new construction has taken place or which old one has been demolished which new road has come what new name has been given so if the aurangzeb road in delhi is changed to kalam's name then you have to attribute this data otherwise somebody has done it as aurangzeb road and you are looking for kalam's road so the system will say no i don't know kalam's is so the location will be there but which road is kalam's road you will not be able to know so this is in this information is requires regular updation second is called as precise position system friends here what do you find i told you that this is for military use because they use two different bands l1 band also l2 band also so now here we find that it it, it will wide you 22 meters horn accuracy look at comparison so pps is much better than the sps but for military purpose even the vertical height look at it in the previous case was 156 meter error here we find 27.7 meters accuracy and designed for military use this is very important so you know about the spss you know about the pps both of them are clear now i told you about the selective availability that means intentionally for a long period up to 2000 starting from 73 and fully operating system was 95 so from 95 to 2000 this period of 15 years was a period in which the information available in sps was degraded intentionally by the department of defense but beyond 2000 that is may 2000 now this is open and everybody is getting the same information no problem so it was intentional degradation of signal which can be done this is very important that us though they have no intent as per their decisions but if they want they can do it now what can they do though they are not interested in uh, stopping the individual information from reaching you but if they want at the regional level that okay asians don't get this information they can do it if they want that african don't get this information they can do it if they want russian don't get this information they can do it and i'll show you that they've gone two steps further that they if they want they can destroy the systems of other countries other countries without even information and look at the look at the technology they have they have I, i'll show that also so what do you find that uh, this is i have already shared now what do you what, why this was stopped why selective availability was stopped what is the purpose now if you look at this this has enhanced 911 service now this 911 has nothing to do with uh, the incident which took place this 911 is the code which is used in the entire north america for doing all kind of telephony and uh, the purpose was uh, that uh, if some emergency situation emerges and if for calling this number 911 then the service provider should know your location and that is very important so you look at it public safety answering point called as psap so this psap will come to know about the location of the caller well and if the location of the caller is not correct the service cannot be given so british president this the us president decided the bill clinton in those days that if we want to improve our psap program it is very important that we do away with the selective availability that is what 911 car navigation now if i don't know how many of you have been us or canada see so for navigating in us friends okay let me tell you, by sitting in the car you can get the information and what we do we have to just put this some information that i want to find a hotel which is vegetarian in nature where four seats are available at 10 o'clock and in the next 10 minutes okay now the system will give you information that you are 200 meters behind this place 
and they will give they will they will start guiding you look at the system how 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 much things have improved how much system has improved even when i go to delhi and if i have to reach the airport my system starts giving me information that you are going to reach the destination in next 20 minutes with this speed look at this and if i want to increase the the uh, time because i have still time i can slow down my vehicle or if i have to go to some other other alternate route it will give me the information that this will be the shortest route all such information but let me tell you this information about shortest route this information about the the uh, all attribute data was fed not by the satellite but by some user on the ground very important so it is going to this adoption of gps time standards the recreation people use it so different kinds of uh, uses are there i have given you very limited uses but then then i will tell you how this technology can be used and then beyond that also how effectively it can, you, you can use it uh this i can skip for you so you can find out locations now this locations will help you in making your maps most accurate are really very important because otherwise you have to do a lot of survey and when you go for survey you don't know where, where, at what latitude you are at what longitude this is the only system available friends in the world right now on that when you look at the map if you want to know the location of a place in terms of degree minutes and seconds nobody in the world using a map can give you information at minute level at second level you will be correct only at the degree level let me tell you one degree on the map particularly near equator will have a difference of 111 km i am talking about meters differences so if you are using a map for your navigation purposes the amount of error is very very high which you don't which you have never thought about it okay and here what you find that precise locations cannot be given by anybody on the map because you cannot read them in minutes and seconds here it gives you the information in minutes and seconds so third is uh, tracking part of it if you are tracking anywhere mapping it, it creates map of the world let me tell you that when you do a survey earlier what was done that you go in the field with dumpy label flag staff uh, sex stand and so many things then you were always worried about the weather and so many problems now you have not to worry you go in the field just keep on clicking the button and come back what happens you want to prepare a map now not the whole information from this system to the monitor immediately the moment you download the information all your locations information will be displayed on a world map automatically and then you have a freedom to edit it you can have title you can add any feature which you want to do it so mapping is then time bringing precise timing to the world and this is very important look at it all the red which i have used so what you find is this these are these are some well identified applications what it says from cell phones and wrist watches to bulldozers shipping containers and atms everywhere this is used then look at it farming construction mining surveying package de delivery logistical supply chain management major communications networks banking systems financial markets and power grids all of them are using it i have given some let me say, say something more it prevents transportational accidents aiding research aid, aiding search and rescue efforts and speeding the delivery of emergency services and disaster relief not only this gps is vital to the next generation air transportation system that will enhance flight safety while increasing air space capacity gps also advances scientific aims such as weather forecasting earthquake monitoring and environmental protection look at look at some identified i remember one incident incident friends when an ips officer from punjab itself was able to catch a terrorist in jharkhand using simple gps technology now all of you are surprised how is it possible it is possible because it requires your intelligence and creativity now this person was having what this person was having a simple mobile now all your mobile movements are tracked the moment you cross a territory you get a message that you are in delhi or you are in haryana what does it mean it means the movement of your equipment is recorded 
now we are moving this now the information available with the operator is that at what speed you are moving because if you are changing the place from one place they come to know at what if you are walking they will have a slow speed if you are using a rickshaw it will have a slightly more speed if you are using a bus different speed and if you are going by air then speed will be different one can easily work out what mode you are using this is what and this this ips officer from punjab was able to track it down and to the extent that he said that this person is moving with a truck and this truck has now stopped because the moment the truck stops this tells you that your movement is stopped the terrorist was caught right on a dhaba in jharkhand and look at the intelligence so all the information was being monitored from the lab one place and the network was there the support was given by mobile operators support was given by the local police and this person sitting in punjab itself decided oh i can catch it catch it and he was caught caught this is where the the intelligence lies in the use of it now i'll move on and there could be many more but i'll come to the what india has done in the recent period and then i'll stop here friends now as far as india is concerned see uh, when uh, uh, professor kalam was alive uh, he told that see the whole gps system glonass system and galileo system is developing why not to develop our own so he said let us develop a system called as gagan he he thought of developing gagan which was gps aided geo navigation system that was in mind he said gagan acronym is as if we are talking about space akash but then he said okay gagan will be a best, best acronym and we are going to call our indian system as gagan it will be geo uh, which, which, which which will be gps aided geo navigation system very nice but then it was for the globe as a whole but we, i told you that it is a very cost very costly uh, affair therefore we could not do it but then in 2000 and 13 itself we decided that we are going to launch our satellites for the regional purpose look at the system what i am going to give you in the information now as on date as on date in the last 3 years itself on april 28 2016 we have launched as many as seven satellites friends now if you look at it very carefully i have given you information that our this system with seven satellites is covering your region look at the information 30 degree east longitude to 130 degree east longitude now india is in between 68 degree and up to 90 uh, 97 degree and 25 minutes in between so we have gone beyond it 30 degree east longitude to 130 degree longitude that means somewhere near the eastern border of china also this whole area on the in, in terms of latitudes look at it we have gone down south 30 degree of south of equator to 50 degree of the latitude again a bigger region which means what look at it very carefully so what you find is that the whole region is covered india lies between 8 degree and 4 minutes to 37 degree and 25 minutes now look at this so what you find is that the whole india all movements within this region can be easily monitored and regulated the f the, the airport authority of india ai is using it now very intensively and now friends using this simple technology now you find that all your movements of airplanes are available with government of india every movement of every plane whether they are standing whether they are moving is available all your trains and tracking can be done on the screen sitting there which train stops where at what time it moves and where it goes everything every information is there and that is where the this initiative is going to help you so from july 2 2013 to april 28 we have managed this and then now we launched how many satellites seven satellites first was called as ir nss 1a and the last one was called as irs nss 1g now there are two important issues first is security issue because now if if such a technology is available i told you that there are many people who are going to misuse it or abuse it yes so handed dps to gps dots now this is a big 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 one we have a much bigger one we have some something called as differential gps where the accuracy will be very high friends we have got gps as small as your button size button size gps is here in buttons 
so see see so what happens now security threats increase even if somebody is not coming i mean the button is there is so so small in size they be that you can't even locate it that is one point of it but what you can do for the security purposes there are two different technology which have come in the world one is called as wave bubble what do you do suppose this is room is a very strategic you are going to have a wave bubble so all around this building in a particular range all your gps signals can be stopped we call this technology as called as rf jamming device so most of the very very confidential locations in america in india if required if required they will have your wave bubble second is called as gps spoofer this is another important technique what happens you degrade the whole radio frequency in the manner that you get you start getting the information you get the information but the information is incorrect information is incorrect but now this is to be done only by the those organizations which really need to secure the most vital locations finally friends since you are all engineers what you are going to do because that is what the message i have for you so first is wherever you are innovate and develop more and more applications of gps <laughs> innovate more and more applications that will depend on your intelligence and your enterprise second ensure to record the changes in locations and emergence of new features using gps after regular interval of time so after every few years or few months you keep on recording the information and that will be the attribute data so that all navigation is possible remember even if you have gps and if you don't have attribute data it is not going to help you even if you have gps if attribute data is not there you cannot locate things this is very important third part is that is what i was the message when i started that our engineers our scientists have to decide that our regional navigation capability be given a global navigation status with that friends thank you very much thank you